Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Sal's House. Happy holidays, too. We got the stockings up, and I got my man Mo Badger here. What is up, up, brother? Great to talk to you. Great to see you. <laughs> Always, man. Been, um, been meaning to kind of learn more of your story for a yeah, while. You know, we've, sure. been, uh, we've been friends now for several years, and yeah. we see each other at different events, and I have so much respect for you and what you do in Buffalo. And Mo is the singing cop, one of the two singing cops, yes, and your sir. buddy Mike Norwood couldn't yes, join sir. us today. We... We appreciate Mike. We, we got will, to do we'll, it again with him. Yeah, we'll, we we'll catch do. up with him yeah. down the road. We yeah. might do a little. We, we miss him. We want to do some singing. Maybe Not you and I will sing a little bit. No, let's do it. All right. So listen, um, I wanted to bring you in because, I mean, you have such a cool, unique story. You're doing so much cool stuff. You and I, I mean, I think we're brothers from another mother. I mean, no, we, the sure. way we're energetic, we love Buffalo. Mm -hmm. But you've taken it to a new level, and you're out there on different platforms. You're a Buffalo cop, but you do this singing thing. You've been out on national TV doing game shows, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So let's start about your story. Um, where'd you grow up? I mean, what, 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 what? got you kind of going in this thing let's just start from the very beginning yeah, are you from I'm, buffalo i'm i was born in buffalo um i grew up well i was born on johnson street where johnson park is on the east side of buffalo my dad grew up his whole life he still to this day says i'm from johnson park um uh my dad i grew up with my dad being a minister so you know most of my life i i learned about being a servant right you know i mean whether it was civil service you know working in the churches, but I learned how, you know, to give back, you know, that was, that was what my life was, you know, between my mom and dad and my grandparents, everybody in my family, you know, they they, our community was giving back, you know? So that's what I always wanted to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it. Um, I actually thought I was going to be like a gospel artist and traveling around the world, which I, you know, I did, I was doing gospel music full time for about five years, um, from about 2000, Eight to about 2013, I traveled um, on the road, and then we started having kids. Did your Did your dad, who was a minister, did you go and sing at the church when he was? Oh no, I I, said, I still sing at the church every week. So when you were day. growing up, though, you did that. That was oh, a big yeah. deal. I mean, I, I played the drums. Me too. I really, yeah, I drum. played the drums. Yeah. Um, and how I long really, you been playing drums? Since I was five, six. Play any other instruments? Keyboard, Man. organ. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I can't. I can only play drums. So okay, you know, I, I, I gotta hear you one day. We gotta go share. I, know, I yeah. got. I got some upstairs. Oh, do you? So yeah, we got a little. Oh, we got it. We got it. We got to check it out. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. what about mom? Um, my mom just always, you know, she's always, I, I, for lack of a better word, she's a hustler. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like she's always at home, always present, but she always found a way to. It seemed like she just gets money to help people. So I'm like, mom, like you, you did this. Okay. Yeah. I made some money. Now I'm giving it away to this person. Yo. So like, even right now we're doing a big, um, toy giveaway, what she does every year. I don't know if it's anyone bigger than hers in Buffalo. Like she gives away literally probably about 30, 40 grand in toys. You wow. know what I mean? And you know, people see what she does and, you know, help her and give back. So that's been my whole thing. My whole life is just to give back. So when I, when I turned 19, 20, I got, um, I started working in the Buffalo Public Schools, um, working with Gear Up and uh, some other, you know, not for profits. I worked for uh, Boys and Girls Club of Buffalo. Um, so I was able to mentor a lot of kids, you know, including like we talked about, Mike Williams yeah. was one of my kids. I, I, I was the, the uh, director of Gear Up at Riverside at the time when he was there. So that was one of my kids I tutored and, you know, just mentored and we stayed tight till the day he died. Um, and so, you know, I, I, my, my whole thing was just to help people, you know, that's been my objective in my life. And I didn't know that it would kind of, you know, segue into me becoming a police officer. And that was never on my, so, so how did that radar. happen? Um, to be honest with you, Sal, um, I had like a bad experience with police officers, you know, growing up and I had a really bad experience when I was, oh, how old am I? I'm 44. So I must've been 30. Okay. And I was driving. I had a nice car at the time, but I had a decent job. So I was, you know, driving a nice car. So at 30, you weren't a cop yet? No. Okay. I didn't become a cop till I was 35. Okay. A little yeah. later than most guys. Yeah, definitely. A lot later. I yeah. was like the, the grandfather of the, of okay. the academy. They probably call you that too. Yeah, they call me <laughs> up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I went through a, a, a terrible experience. I was traveling down Hurdle, and for some reason, these police officers thought that I was a, a thug. And um, <laughs> and I remember, you know, one of the officers rolled by, and and the other officer asked, "Did I? Did they know him? Did they know me?" And they was like, "Yeah, yeah, he looks familiar." And I'm like, "Oh, good." You know, I do at this time. I'm all in the community. Like I'm doing. 
concert fundraisers for the mayor. And I'm, I mean, I'm like, I'm traveling everything at this time. And, and when it happened, I was like, it kind of threw me off. I'm like, what's going on? Like, you don't know me for the good stuff. You think I'm a bad person. Right. So at that time, um, they wind up, you know, taking me out the car. They wind up strip searching me at some little bathroom because they thought I had drugs on me, which I didn't, of course. Broke up my car, really messed it up pretty bad. And um, at that time, I didn't know how traumatic it was to me. Um, but it really affected me because, you know, like I'm a guy that's trying to keep literally kids off the streets from yeah. going to jail. And, and I became profiled like a lot of so many of our um, inner city youth are. And at that time, I made a decision, you know, because I'd already took the exam, but I really wasn't going to you know, follow through it. It was like, I did pretty well, but I just kept taking deferment. So I was like, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say no, but I'm going to take a deferment. I'm not going to do it. I'll defer, you know? Right. And when that happened, I made up my mind that I, I wanted to be a police officer that people in Buffalo could know and trust. Cause a lot of people knew me and it's like, I know at least they'll have somebody that can say, Hey, I know that's a good guy and I can trust him, you know? So yeah, before we go on, I want to thank uh, Sports City Pizza Pub, 1407 Niagara Street. You know this area well. It's the, yeah. They have great pizza over there, Niagara sure. Street, 1407. Uh, Mike and the crew down there are doing a great job, so make sure you visit them. Uh, Sports City Pizza Pub being a part of Sal's house here. All right, so you get into the uh, academy, I guess, and you're, what, 35 years old, yeah. you said? Yeah, 35. <laughs> I'm, I'm 35 at the time. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, went through the, the whole, you know, process, and um, my my – my objective, like I said, was not, you know, if I had to arrest somebody, yeah, but my objectives was really to touch the young people and show them that not only are we human, but we care. You know, yeah. I tell kids all the time, I work in the Buffalo Public Schools now as a SRO. I'm a school resource officer. And literally every day I tell a kid that I don't know I love them, you yeah. know, because I do. I, I, I love my community. I love Buffalo. So I love you. That's awesome. You know? where, where are you based? You travel to different schools? all of them. Yeah, yeah that's I love it. I mean, my base school is Riverside, yeah. where I went to school. I'm a graduate, I'm a graduate of Riverside, Great. class of 98, Yale Cup champs. <laughs> <laughs> Cliff Robinson, Mike Cliff Williams. Cliff Robinson, Mike Williams, you know, so yeah. we got a, a, um, we got a, a good history. Great Mo Badger, yeah. obviously, with basketball, football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did you, did you play? Did you grow up playing? Yeah, everything? I played, yeah, I played basketball, um, um, won the Yale Cup. Uh, one of the starting point guards. That's when they had Yale Cup, Harvard Cup, yeah, all that. Now yeah. everything's uh, together with Section 6 when yeah. it comes to high school. Mm -hmm. All right, how, how, how did you meet Mike, your fellow singing cop? Um, so I was actually a coach. <coughs> so <coughs> even farther back, I talked about Johnson Park. Yeah. My dad and his dad were, all, were really good friends at Johnson Park. Actually, his dad is a little older than my dad, but my dad and his and, and Mike's uncle were best friends. Okay. They were best friends. So, you know, my dad grew up looking up to Mike's dad. Mike's dad, Mr. Mr. Uh, Norwood Sr., Michael Norwood Sr., a living legend. Look him up. Okay. Like, literally, he played at Canisius, played Michael overseas. Nor All right, yeah. Like, he, like, he, like, literally documented. He's a big dude, Mike. No, yeah. So you're, your buddy, yeah. Yeah, so his, Mike, his dad is a little bit shorter. Okay. But, like, he's documented beating NBA players one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. they, they would come to the Randy Smith at that time, I'm sure you know. And he ran yep. the Randy Smith. Like, Mike was that guy. So, um, they, they grew up together. And so, you know... Like as we got older, um, I was probably because Mike is thirty six now, maybe. So I'm older than him. Yeah. So when he was playing AAU, I was coaching for the AAU team that he was playing with. I was coach. I coached Johnny Flynn, um, Paul Harris, yeah. Lazar Hayward, a lot of those guys. So those are my guys. And uh, Mike Williams mm -hmm. played on the team as well. Um, Rodney Pierce, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. So um, Mike was one of the. Uh, young men on the team. So I knew him as like, I treat him like a little brother, you know, that was my guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like a high flyer. Like he just tried to dunk everything. He's just dunking everywhere. And, um, and that's how we met. And then, um, we took the exam together and, you know, I, I, I would keep telling him like, I don't think I'm gonna do it, bro. You know what I'm saying? But you know, more power to you. And then he got on Then he started telling me how much he loved the job and how much he, you know, enjoyed it. And, then that situation happened with me. And then mm -hmm. I wind up coming on and I got put to the same district as him, which was really cool. Um, and then we started riding together, you know, immediately. Um, and then we, or, or if I didn't ride with him, we were together. How so, does that work? Do you get to choose who you ride with? Do they put you together? What's it based so, on? Yeah, you get, to, you get to choose. But he did have a partner, um, Danner, 
who I love. Yeah. Um, um, and so me and my partner, who was Megan at the time, would just follow them around. You okay. know what I'm saying? So we are all together, you know, you know, making noise in the city, you know, trying to, you know, just, you know, being active, you yeah. know. And then um, uh, me and Mike started riding together once we went to housing and strike force. Gotcha. And we were in housing and that's how, you know, kind of history was made. Like we, you know, in housing, we did a lot of work, but we had free time to like do community stuff. So we would go into like the barber shops and, you know, talk to kids, hand out stickers, you know, and just do our thing. And um, just doing real, I mean, what I call community policing. Yeah. And one day we were singing in Salsaritas and um, a young lady filmed it. And like when she filmed it, I'm like, hey, don't put that out. You know, thanks for filming, but we don't want it. Just well, I, I, I know you sang. Did you know Mike sang? You said so, we're all singing together. That's another funny story. So <clears throat> like when we first, like this is 2000. 15. Okay. Oh, wow. Not too long ago. Yeah. 2015, where he's singing. I'm like, yo, Mike, you, you can sing. So, like, like first I was convincing him that he could sing, right? Yep. Within three months, he was convincing me that he sung better than me, right? <laughs> so, and I'm supposed to be the singer. And um, so, we, you know, it would always be a thing where, like, now now we're having battles. So, like, yep. we, we would be in C District. Shout out to C District. Um. We would be in C District having singing battles, you know, during our lunch breaks and stuff like that. And, that, you know, you know, flickering lights and turning off the lights, putting on our flashlights and we're singing and, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just having a good time. And um, and that's when I found out, you know, he, his passion for music, which he had a passion that I never knew about. Like, he's probably more into R&B and music than I am, to be honest with you. Like, he yeah. knows every new artist, knows every new song. So he's really into it. So, um. I went to a wedding um, with my, my guy, Dax. He's a police officer. We went to his wedding. And at the end, they asked me to sing a song. So I started singing uh, Ed Sheeran, Thinking Out Loud. Okay. So afterwards, he's like, man, I would have sung that way better <laughs> than it. you, blah, 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 talking junk. And just, you know, we always crack jokes. And um, he's like, I would have sung that way better than you. You should be lucky I, you didn't give me the mic or whatever. So the song comes on the same week in Salsarita. So I'm like, here go your chance. Let's hear it. And we started singing and the rest is history. We wind up on Ellen and Amazing love Grace. And All right. Yeah. So, so me. yeah, you on Ellen, man. Like, yeah. how did that come about? Someone get in touch with her? Like, so oh, it, went viral. it went viral. Yeah. And then her producers reached out to us. Yeah. Because they're like, hey, these guys are cops and they're singing. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. And look what they do for the community. Yeah, and, then, that, and that's what happened. Tell yeah. me about going out. It was L.A.? Yeah, we went to L.A. Oh, man, they treated us great. Like, I don't know what the rumors are about Ellen. I, like, she literally was a. I I got you. Yeah, because I know some stuff yeah. came out, but they yeah. were good to you? No. I mean, she was good yeah. to us. Everybody. But, you know, you hear things. But, like, yeah. she was literally really good to us. Um, we, we enjoyed our time. We went up there. They rolled out the red carpet for us, even though, you know, we weren't stars you know they, they got migos next to us all these people and the travis scott next door to yep. us and they treated us you know really well and so we flew out there um did the show and then kind of the rest was history just kind of took a took a kind of a life of his own signing to you know likeness movie deals and stuff like that so it's, it's insane it's, man it's really cool um and then even game shows all right yeah. so i think one of the things so growing up i want i've always wanted i still want to be a host of a game show. Like, that's yeah. my, I want to host a game show, right? I I'm think, not going to lie. Yeah. I'm, I'm just I waiting do, for, for Steve Harvey to hit me. Yeah. Oh, you want to try it one time? Yes. Please. Exactly, right? Yeah. I would. I want to host, like, uh, I always say I want to host The Bachelor. I want to do, like, unscripted yeah. reality TV, right? No, you were on The Amazing Race. That's what you, you did, reality yeah. TV. Mm -hmm. How did all that happen? So, same thing. So, kind of what happens is after you go on Ellen, yeah, your name kind of gets put, sure. you know, it's like if you go on Oprah, it's like, yeah. Oh, well, we heard about these guys, and that's what happened. They heard about us, and we were being accorded by, like, four different shows at the time of Amazing Race. And um, we, we chose Amazing Race, and it was cool, man. We got to see the world. Spent two weeks in Portugal. Um, was your family allowed to go with you? No, no. Just you couldn't do that Mike. because... Yeah, just me and Mike. Well, how were they with all that? Oh, no, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, you really can't have your phones. You really can't right. have any. No, you can't have your phones. Actually, not really. You don't have a phone. Right. So, I mean, it was cool, though. I mean, like, we really had a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. And then 
You go on Family Feud. Yeah, Family Feud, <laughs> Entertainment Tonight. What's the, give me the conversation. You go to your family and go, hey, we gotta, we're, we're going to go so, on no, the Feud. So it's funny. Like my cousin, they were doing open casting. And my cousin had um, like like reached, like we have a big family group text. So like, hey, yeah. we want to go on Family Feud. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, you want you to you know, reach out to the producers? I'm like, they're like, yeah, let's let's do it or whatever. And um, so we sent we we had to put together a video, get our names down, send pictures, and I think like one of the producers were like because their TV show had reached out to me and Mike about okay. going on, so they were kind of familiar with our story. So we got on there pretty quickly, and um, the rest is history. We had a, we had a good time. And while you're on there, and you sent me the clip the other day, I didn't know this. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're a big football fan. You're a big Bills fan. <laughs> People can find it, but tell everybody what happened. So I always said, so the first time I went on the show, so we went twice, two different sets. Okay. So we went, the first game we won, we lost the fast money. The second game we lost in, in sudden death. So they're, like when we went up, like we had such a good time. Immediately Steve like reached out to me. He was like, listen, you're coming back. On. Okay. I'm like, okay, you know, we don't know, but yeah, I, he might say that to everybody. Sure, sure. Literally. Next year, January, February, they call us. Hey, y'all ready to come back? I'm like, yeah, let's go. So we go back. And I, I told me and my brother, because we had a couple of exes where we didn't say anything. I said, listen, if I don't have anything, I'm going to, whatever the answer is, I don't care what the question is, I'm saying Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> so he didn't believe I was going to do it. So the question was, what would the tooth fairy hide under their pillow? No, what would you, what, what would a, a, a um, a kid, a kid hide up under a pillar to trick the tooth fairy that they, they that it's a tooth so you could get money, right? Yes. So I didn't have nothing. I said Josh Allen the Buffalo Bills, and he and, had that classic Steve Harvey look on his face, like what you know, and, and, the and, meme basically. And you couldn't see, like, hopefully maybe one day they'll bring out the whole footage. Yeah, like he went on for about three, four, five minutes about how much he loved Josh Allen. Yeah, first of all, and just like he's six five, two forty, just run down his whole. Right. His whole attribute, and it says, and you think he's gonna be on the pillow? I said, it's up there, Steve. It's up there. <laughs> and what's yeah. funny is Stephon Diggs was on Family Feud, and he yeah. had a viral moment too. Yeah, yeah. He said something that was kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, a little inappropriate. Where it was pretty yeah. hilarious, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah so sure. he, he did that as well. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Once again, uh, thanks to Sports City Pizza Pub, fourteen oh seven Niagara Street. Um, let me get a little serious with you. Um, what was five fourteen like for you? It was. It was. It was something to see. Um, I was at home. I'll never forget. You know, the, the times you remember exactly where you were. Hundred percent. I was in the basement playing John Madden football. You know, just a normal little Saturday, just taking some time to myself. And my uncle called me. He's like, "Hey, Mo, um, people getting shot at, you know, tops." I'm like, "No, nobody's getting shot at tops. Somebody, you know, was in the streets and got shot at tops. I'll go find out what happened." And then as I'm finding out what happened, I started getting phone calls. That, you know, there's somebody randomly shooting people at tops. And I it was it was definitely a chilling feeling that, you know, I mean, my aunt, like literally I grew up four blocks away, my church is four blocks away where yeah. I go, and my aunt goes there every day. You know, so immediately I just tried to start figuring out who's there that I know, you know, who's who's impacted. And I wind up knowing three people. Um, of the 10. Um, but, you know, it was, I, I, you know, you just feel like that stuff doesn't happen in Buffalo, right. right? You know, like all places that, I mean, New York, you know, LA, the bigger cities, but Buffalo, nobody's thinking about Buffalo. So for us to be on a radar for- Did you, did you have to like go in and like put your uniform on and no, go to No, no, no. I stayed off. I was at home. Um, I just, I did go up there and just, you know, you know, pray with people, yeah. talk to people in my regular civilian clothes. Yeah. And just, you know, kind of checked on people. But yeah, that was, that was uh, really, man, uh, it was crazy. And I remember, so that night we had tickets to Justin Bieber here that night. He was mm -hmm. playing downtown. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know, we didn't know what to do. I, I felt guilty. I'm like, we can't go, can we? Like, I didn't know. You don't want to go and say, like, you're disrespecting because, but at the same time, like, you also want to heal you got, and, like, and you, you want to keep live. living your life, right? Yeah. And it was nice. I'm glad we went. We did yeah. go. And um, he actually, Bieber's from Toronto. Yeah. And he actually did something for, and yeah. talked about yeah. know, the event that night. And it was, 
it was obviously it, it wasn't the same but we went but i remember also the next day yeah was micah hyde's tournament yeah and i saw you mm -hmm. and i was the on-field mc of course and you sang the anthem as you always do and you were very emotionally did a great job um and and everybody obviously loved that you do that a lot you sing anthems you've sang at bills bisons what's that like for you to be in sabers, front of a yeah. sabers in front yeah. of the crowd to you and Mike to sing the national anthem, especially in front of seventy thousand yeah, at I mean, Highmark. It's it's an honor, man. You know, I mean, I'm a I'm a Buffalo kid to the heart. Yeah, man. like I'm really a Buffalo kid, and for to be chosen to represent our city um, in front of those people, and, and I don't. I, okay, so I go to games, but it just seems like when we do it, the crowd appreciates it even yeah. more because they know our story. You know I agree. What I'm saying? And just to hear the roar of the crowd and the appreciation for what we do as our jobs and then what we do for the community. And, you know, hopefully sometimes we sound decent doing it. So, yeah. you know, it, it's cool. But, like, I'll never forget that Micah Hyde day. I didn't know, what, like, a lot of us, we didn't know whether to do it. Yeah. You know, even when I talked to Micah's um, wife at the time, when I talked to Micah and his wife, they're like, should we do it? I'm like, let's do it. And I remember, you know, I don't know if you remember afterwards, you know, I was kind of emotional. Yeah, you were very, yeah. And all the guys came over to oh. hug me. And they were, and like literally, they were so moved, they wanted to figure out what they, what could we do. Yeah. And I said, man, come down, you know. And within three days, they were down there on Jefferson, you know. There you go. You know, so, I mean, that that's, you know, some of the things um, that, you know, was very uh, strategic in my life and just big points. That I'll never forget that you know these 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 kids you know a lot of them are kids. My my daughter's Josh's age, you know, yeah. and um these kids really you know embraced our community so much during that time. I remember um this before the big Demar thing and Demar, I mean he was like I mean Demar was with me all the time, and you know he was just so moved. He didn't him and T dot I call it well Terrell Dotson yeah um they didn't want to leave. They're like listen Mo. Um, come back and get us. We want to come back down here. So, like they, they, they were so like moved by what happened, and it, it really um, brought our whole community together in a whole, a whole different way. You know, which you know, these mass shootings are are meant to bring fear, and I think you know what he meant for evil. A lot of it turned in good because you know we we had a lot of people come together and really show love for our community, and they're still you know, um, good things that are happening in that neighborhood because of the tragedy, you right. know, that the, the, the world saw Jefferson Avenue, yeah. you know, and which was a lot of times a for, for, forgotten about place in our community. And now the spotlight has been put there. So, you know, you know, I feel like I'm a, you know, I believe in God. Like I go to church and I'm a believer and it says, you know, all things work out for the good of those that love God, you know? So I know it, it was meant to be bad, but, God's working it out. And you are, you do know a lot of the Buffalo Bills really well. And yeah. I know you text me sometimes after games, you're living and dying with this team emotionally, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, sure. um, you know, one thing I, I hear a lot is, oh, the window's closed. And I'm like, look, as long as they have 17, no. the window's not closed. The, where's, where's the window going? I know, it's right. He's not even, he's not even 30. What are we right, talking about? I know, about? exactly, right? So, and people are playing until 40 now. Like, <laughs> that's it, that's like right. what are we doing? Yeah, for sure. And um, so just about this team and about not even this year necessarily, just this organization right now where it stands. You know, you grew up watching. We all went through the drought, right? I mean, where it stands tough. right now and, you know, your, your thoughts on just where this team can go and what they can do. I mean, I think the sky's the limit. Um, I, like you said, I mean, that throw that he made to uh, to the running back. Murray. Murray. Yeah. What in the – Yeah, we're talking here after the Kansas City game, so everybody knows in case you're watching. Oh, this. okay. Sorry. That's okay because, you know, people might be watching this a little later. Like, which throw? He, I mean, Mo, I'm watching down the sidelines, and I'm, I thought he was out of bounds. What I mean, he's that? going out, and still, it's unbelievable, right? What is that? It's unbelievable. I know. He, I mean, this kid is incredible. He's, he's, I mean, and he's just such a good kid. I, yeah. I, you know, I was, you know, lucky and blessed to, when his rookie year, um, he came to Riverside High School. Oh, okay. And um, I was able to meet him, and that's how we built our friendship. Good. Um, and, and, you know, I just like, hey, man, anything you need, man, I'm, you know, and we, you know, I've been able to, you know, Dying with him and do, do different things, but he's just such a, a good, just genuine person. Like, you know what I get asked a lot of times? I'm like, you're like, you know, because I'm with the guys all the time in the right. locker room talking to them. Oh, are there any real jerks? I'm like, this team doesn't have any jerks. They don't. The only guy I always kind of, I, I always say this there's one guy, and I say that 
if you don't know him, you might think that, but he's on the exterior, I, he's I, gruff. I got who I got in my On the go exterior, ahead. he's gruff. Go but then he's just a big teddy bear. Who is it? So, no, so I got somebody else. You go ahead. I'm going to say Jordan Phillips. Jordan Phillips. Jordan Phillips, definitely. He, he, he's, 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 a, he's a total teddy bear. Yeah, but if you like, you you don't know until you break through that exterior, right? And I say, that's the only guy you might think, but he's. But, so, he's my great. guy is Steph. Oh, oh, great. Tell us about him. So, no, Steph, no, he's cool. But, like, he's just, he's like. He's different. He's different. He is. He's different. He so, is. you know, you like, you know, like DeMar, like he's always just been outgoing. Yeah. Like the first day I met That's him, right. his rookie year, he was just like, I mean, like, hey, I'm coming over to the house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and then, you know, you had like Steph, like he was a little, you know, Steph. then once we got to know him and he started doing the giveaways, I'm like, oh, he's cool. Yeah. You know, I just didn't. You know him well? I don't know Steph well. You know, like we see each other, of course, yeah. we slap each other up. He stuff. seems a little guarded. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, he has a lot, he has a lot on his plate. He's a he's yeah. a he's a legit superstar. Yeah, you know for sure, so, for sure. You know, but I, I mean, like he doesn't act like that. Like he'll he's cool. Like we went bowling together, stuff like that. So, like he's, <laughs> Is he a good he's, bowler. We didn't, it really wasn't about the. Bowling. I got you. I got you. Like about the camaraderie. Well, I'm just wondering about it. Like, these guys that can always do so much. They're such great athletes. Yeah, it's no, unbelievable. Some of them. Now he's a hooper though. Is he? So yeah. Um. So I did a All Star game with Floyd Mayweather. And um what? Yeah. <laughs> nice. So I did an all-star game in Las Vegas with Floyd Mayweather for what was that? Some like I don't know what it was. But I, I, I sung the national anthem for it and I was a part of it as one of the celebrity guests or whatever that is. And he did it like like the time right before me with Benny the Butcher. Yeah. So I missed that one. I re I was supposed to be there. Okay. And I just didn't make it. And, um, but like, it would have been cool to be out there with them, but like he did it like, but if you watch him, he can really hoop, like he can go. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, these guys are they're incredible athletes. So, uh, you know, you, you, and then you get to know him off the field a little bit and obviously it changes your perspective, but, uh, Mo Badger here, singing cop. Thank you once again, sports city pizza pub, 1407 Niagara street. All right. Well, Mike's not here, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta sing it too. What do you, what do you gotta do here? So I grew up, my dad was a singer. My dad really? made a record, yep, in Buffalo. They used to go around. He made a record. There was actually, the record I have, it's an old 78, actually. It's not even nice. a, right? And it says on there um, the name of the street, and I can't think of it now. It's right across the street from where the Delta Sonic is on Main Street now. There used to be a recording studio, I guess, back in the 60s, right over there. There used to be a post office Northampton? there. Northampton? Northampton, yes. Okay. It's, it says there on the, on, the, on the record. Like so, Northampton. Northampton is the street my, 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 parent, my, my mom grew up on. Really? Yeah, so like my... my uh, my my uncle just passed away um, about six months ago, and his name on Facebook is Northampton. Like, well, they love Northampton. My dad grew up on Swan Street. He came here from Italy. Okay, and he didn't graduate high school or anything, but wow. he was a singer. Nice. And they used to have a band. They'd go around, and he made a record. So when I was in high school, I was Conrad Birdie and Bye Bye Birdie. Nice singing, right? So I try to do that. Yes, and now I'm a drummer too. So what do you got? you like? What my girl? Right? You sing my girl? I can try and join you. What um, do you? It's Christmas. Christmas time. What was you? It's Christmas. Christmas time. What do you like for Christmas? Um. What do you got? You better watch out. You better not cry. You, you better, better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, he's, he's making, making a wish. wish. He's checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. Come on, you know who was with me? He sees you when you're sleeping. Come on. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So you good for goodness sake. Oh, you, you better, better watch out. out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm, I'm telling, telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to, to town. town. <laughs> I love oh it, buddy. God. Merry Christmas Amen. to you. Merry Christmas, love you. Man. Much love. You Thank you know. for all you do. Listen, thank you, know? you man. Like, you got literally... It. I know this was about me being interviewed, but I really want to thank you. Like before I met you, I loved you just because like you were you seemed like the, the guy that was just a fan that got a shot. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you're, you. you're you're still not a um journalist to me. No, yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? You're you're the fan like me that got an opportunity to talk about what we all talk about at the barbershop. I always love to say, yeah. I'm just a kid from Cheek to Wagga who's living his dream. But no, you really are. You know what I mean? and, and that's what I love about you. So, you know, before I ever met you, I was singing a Sal Capaccio song. I appreciate it. And for it. you to come through, and remember we did the Friday night under lights. Yeah, we did. You came by and, and just, you know, were present and, and just, just showed love to the crowd and everything. I mean, that means the world to me. Um, I know... 
Um, a lot of times, I, even in my little space, it, you know, sometimes how small Buffalo is, it seems like you can't really go anywhere without, hey, blah, 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 go yeah. to the mall. And my wife hates going to the mall with me because it's like, you know, we really, you know, I'm, I'm not a star. It happens but, all the time wherever you know we go. Saying? I know. And you know what you know, I always say? People come up to me all the time. My big thing is people go up. Oh man, I know you talk about sports all day. I'm like, look, I do, but you don't. So if you want to, it's yeah, really cool. yeah, yeah. Like that's sure. you, this is your chance. No, you for want. sure. So I'm no. totally cool with it yeah. when that happens. You know. So I, I appreciate that, man. That just you know, I, I, I'm totally just amazed at what you've turned this into. You know, well, you turned this into some golden, golden material, man. And I'm no, it couldn't happen to a better person. I'm well, so happy it happened for you. And and, and you know, um, that's why you, my wife will tell you, she's sitting right there. You're one of the first people I wanted to get on this show. It's something new that I launch but with her thank you my wife yana because with her, doing a great job yeah we um we started uh capaccio media yeah that's the new media company awesome. thank you very much um thanks for my wife yana for letting us use the house again thank today you. it is sal's thank house and thanks to sports city pizza pub 1407 niagara street and thanks to my man mo badger thanks yeah, a lot buddy love you, bro. much love you too yeah, all right in, thanks man. a lot <laughs> all right merry christmas to everybody out there we'll talk to you next time on sal's house, sal's house baby